بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله أما بعد The Book of Zakah <coughs> So Zakah it is divided into two categories that which is an obligation and that which is nifl So the obligatory form of Zakah is two types The first type of obligatory Zakah is the Zakah of wealth and this is an obligation upon four types of wealth now, and then there is zakatul badan and this is zakatul fitr so zakatul fitr when is it given so the time for giving or donating your zakatul fitr there are three specific times the time in which it is permissible for it to be given and the time in which it is encouraged for it to be given and the time in which it is forbidden for it to be given as for the p permitted time it is before the ending of Ramadan by a day or two, meaning the 29th or 30th of Ramadan. And this is the time when it is permitted for a person to give his zakat al-fitr. And then there is an encouraged, recommended time. And this time is from Salat al-Fajr on the day of Eid to the Eid prayer itself. And this is the most preferred time to give zakat al-fitr. And then there is an impermissible time and this is after Salat al-Eid. So after Salat al-Eid, Zakat al-Fitr cannot be given. To whom is Zakat al-Fitr given? Like the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam, it is to feed the poor and needy. And how much Zakat al-Fitr is given? It is a complete handful of food. So one sa' is four handfuls of food and and each handful is the handful of an average person. Now, so the amount of zakah which is given in modern day terms, zakat al-fitr, is just under three kilograms. However, we give three kilogram, kilograms of rice, for example, because we know that we have sufficed the minimum amount and then there is a small addition. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he used to give zakat al-fitr as food. And therefore, that which is more appropriate and better for you is for you to give zakat al-fitr as a Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa used to give it, i.e. I, I, in food and not, mon not money. And upon whom is the obligation of zakat al-fitr? Every Muslim who lives till the last day of Ramadan, every single Muslim, upon them is the obligation of zakat al-fitr. And this applies to the young and the old the male and the female, the slave or the free person. So every person who lives till the last sunset of Ramadan and he is a Muslim, even if he or she accepted Islam one minute before the last sunset of Ramadan, then zakat al-fitr is an obligation upon that person. And zakat al-fitr can be given in the form of dates and wheat, rice, and Shaykh Ibn Uthmi rahimullah, mentioned that even in the form of pasta, yani raw pasta, it's permitted. And then the second form of zakah is zakatul mal, i.e. the zakah of wealth. What types of wealth is zakat an obligation upon? Firstly, gold and silver. Gold and silver and anything which takes the place or the ruling of gold and silver like currencies, paper currencies and so on and so forth. For example, pounds, dollars, euros, and reals. In order for zakat to be an obligation upon gold, then Fat gold has to reach the minimum threshold, which is known as an nisab. And how much is this? It is 83 grams. So if a person's gold, if it reaches 83 grams or more, zakat is an obligation from that gold. And also when it comes to silver, 595 grams, 595 grams or more. So this brother, if he has with him sterling, pound sterling, and he has a thousand pound sterling. If a person possesses a thousand pound sterling of any sterling pounds, is zakah an obligation upon that wealth? We go to the goldsmith who, who buys and sells gold and silver, or we check the value of the wealth. So we ask him that 83 grams of gold, how much... How much is it in pound sterling? And if he says that the value of 80, 83 grams of gold is 1,200 
pound sterling as an example. Tamam. Therefore, a th- the thousand pounds has not reached the level of the nisab, the threshold. And that person might reply, okay, because it has not reached the value of 83 grams of gold, i.e. 1,200 pounds, that there is no uh, zakah. However, we say to him, but we have to check the value of silver as well. And then we ask the person that how much is 595 grams of silver worth in pounds? And he replies that it is worth 900 pounds, for example. Now, his 1,000 pounds has reached the nisab, the minimum threshold. So when it comes to paper currency, we always consider the lower value in terms of the nisab between gold and silver. How do we calculate the amount which is owed on zakat? This thousand pounds sterling or 83 grams of gold or 595 grams of silver, how much do we know to give from these amounts? And this is very easy. And that is, using a calculator, for example, you divide the amount of wealth which you have by 40. So Sheikh Ibrahim, for example, he has 1.2 million pounds. How much zakah should should he give? So you divide it by 40. And when we divide it by 40, if he possesses 120 million pounds sterling, then he has to give 3 million. So, and this is how easy it is that the amount of wealth which you possess, divide it by 40, and then you give one fortieth. So this is pertaining to the first type of wealth, which is gold and silver and paper currency. And then the second type of wealth upon which zakah is an obligation is that which the earth produces from grains and produce. Grains, like for example, wheat and produce like, for example, dates. As for fruits and vegetables, there is no zakah due upon them. As for gold and silver and paper currency and stock and merchandise, as well as free gazing cattle, then the fundamental condition is that a whole year has to pass on it being above the minimum threshold, either nisab. As for grain and produce from the earth, then the passing of a year is not a condition. Rather, whenever the harvest is collected, zakah is given. Now, like Allah subhanahu wa said, the meaning of which is, and give its due on the day of its harvest. And the amount which is given for zakah from grain or produce is according to how it has been irrigated. Now. So if a person has had to irrigate the crops himself, by a mortar, for example, or channeling water towards the grain and the crops, then the cost of it for the farmer or the owner is more. For example, Sheikh Ibrahim, he harvested 10 tons of date. In fact, we'll say 100 tons. So from Sheikh Ibrahim's farm, 100 tons of dates were harvested. And so you ask him that in terms of irrigating this produce or the crops, does it require work from yourself? And yes, he said, yes, I have a mortar and machines which are used or utilized to irrigate the crops. So from 100 tons, what is a tenth? So from those 100 tons of dates, we took 10 tons and then we take a quarter of 10, which is two and a half. So he gives two and a half tons in terms of zakah. And if the crops were, were irrigated naturally without cost to the farmer, then we could take a half of the ten. So you said with regards to gold and silver that the minimum threshold after which zakah is an obligation is 83 grams of gold and 595 grams of silver. As for crops and produce or grains and produce, then what is the minimum threshold? Uh, then the minimum threshold for grains and crops is five osuk. And five osuk or each osuk is 60 sa. sa. Tama. So, so the amount or the, the amount after which, the minimum threshold after which zakah on grains and crops is an obligation is five osuk. Na'am. And each whisk is 60 sa. Therefore, the total is 300 sa. The third type of wealth upon which zakah is due 
Um, so, for example, if he possesses camels and also sheep and goats, and then he is asked that do you have to buy food for your cattle, and he says no, I allow it to freely graze the graze the earth. So, if he has to buy food for the cattle, then there's ليش عليه هذا؟ نعم. Then there's no zakah upon it. نعم. So if the cattle requires food to be purchased by the owner, then there's no zakah due on the cattle. نعم. However, if the cattle is sa'ima, meaning it is free free grazing upon the earth, it freely grazes the earth and eats from the earth, then zakah is due. And the meaning of cattle or bahimat al-an'am is camels, cows, and goat and sheep. But if he owns chickens or horses there is no zakah upon this and how much zakah is due on cattle go back to the hadith which mentions the exact amount of zakah to be given on camels and cows and sheep and goats and as for the hisab of zakah then it requires a pen and paper for a person to calculate now when we studied zakah in Medina then the sheikh used to make us calculate it And then the fourth and last type of zakah is عروض التجارة أنا أشرح So Sheikh Ibrahim he possesses a big supermarket and we ask him what do you sell in the supermarket he sells building materials and chicken, wood iron, cars and planes and all of this is his merchandise which he sells so we say to him that you have to specify a time in which we can calculate your zakah. Um, so we say to him that you have to specify a, a time in the year in which we can calculate your zakah. And the majority of the wealthy people and businessmen uh, in our country, like Ibrahim, uh, may Allah increase him from his kindness, uh, they calculate their zakah in the month of Ramadan. And the reason why they do this is that the month of Ramadan, people pay attention to it. So for example, in this country, you use the Gregorian calendar and the months which relate to it. And Now, so you are unaware of the majority of the Islamic months until Ramadan comes. Everybody is aware of Ramadan. So when Ramadan comes, the majority of the people, they give their zakat. So when Ramadan comes and we open the supermarket and we ask Sheikh Ibrahim, that what is the value of your merchandise or stock in your supermarket? And if he says it is 40 million pounds sterling, no. a billion, milliard, no, billion, 40 billion pounds sterling. So how much zakah needs to be given from 40 billion? One billion, because you divide it by 40 and you give it. And if Sheikh Ibrahim came to us and he said, I am a business and amwal alati amliku. Amwal nukud. And he says that in terms of the cash which I possess cash, no. and I own, it increases and decreases throughout the year. So we ask him, when is the date in which you give your zakah? And he says, the first of Ramadan every year I give my zakah. And so you open the safe on the first of Ramadan. And how much do you have in terms of cash? And he says that I only have 16 million pounds. And million and No. 60 million zakatha million one is no so we go back to the paper currency which he has no. and so he possesses 16 million 16 million cash so he has 60 i 60 million in terms of cash and therefore the zakah which is due upon it is 1.5 million pounds So, this is a real story. Okay, so no. the, a, a true story that there was a, a sheikh or a scholar and he had three students who used to study with him. No. In order for them to practice zakah and practice how to calculate zakah, the sheikh said to his students, each one of you go and check the wealth of your father and calculate how much zakah is given. So one of the three students, he's poor and he's an orphan. What does he do and how does he calculate his zakah when he has no wealth? He left the people until they were sleeping. And then he broke into the house of his neighbors and he lit the lamp. 
and he took out the notebook and then he began to cut so then he took very, the various records the financial records and he began to calculate the amount of zakah and he found that there's discrepancies in the figures and whilst he was doing this and checking the finances and calculating the zakah the owner of the house he woke up due to the light in the office and so the owner of the house said thief and the student replied no he replied, there are other you and the ones who are like you, you're the thieves. Because عليك. there are discrepancies and errors in your finances. And because of this, me, we, receive, we remain poor. And upon you was to calculate your zakah and your wealth like this and this. And all of this is wrong. So this wealthy person, he was amazed. So this wealthy man, he said to his wife, ما رأيك أن نزوج هذا ببنتنا يحفظ المال ويحاسف وكل شيء فتزوج so they became married. So one more time, zakah is two types. There is zakah which is an obligation and there is zakah which is nafal, recommended and encouraged. And the zakah which is an obligation we mentioned, either it is a zakah upon the individual or it is a zakah due upon the wealth. And the, za and the zakah which is due upon the wealth is due upon four types of wealth. To whom do we give zakah? Who do we give zakah to? So there are eight groups of people to whom zakah is given. Eight groups of people to whom zakah is given and nobody else besides them. Naam. So firstly the faqir. And who is the faqir? So the fuqara and the masakin. And what is the difference between the faqir and the miskin? And here in this ayah, there's a difference between the faqir and the miskin. The faqir is the one who is completely poor and possesses nothing. Or he possesses something... However, it is below what suffices him. And this is what we have to explain. So now, this brother who is poor and all of us are poor in front of Allah, we have to calculate how much does he require on an annual basis. Why? Because zakah is always given on an annual basis. So if we take a round figure and we say that this person who lives here, he requires a thousand pounds a month to live. Therefore, on an annual basis, he requires 12,000 pounds just to live. This 12,000 pounds, this is the minim, minimum amount of wealth which he requires just to live. So it's not a luxury of buying Porsches or Mercedes, rather the minimum amount which he requires to live. When we're giving these examples, uh, we're not joking, but we're giving these examples and scenarios so we can understand and relate to them. So when Sheikh Ibrahim comes and he's a rich, wealthy businessman, and he says to this poor one, how much do you require to live throughout the year? So... Uh, Ibrahim says to the poor brother, how much money do you require on an annual basis just to live, just to suffice? And he mentions that I require 12,000 pounds sterling. And then he says to him, okay, how much do you actually own? And he replies that I don't possess anything. And then Ibrahim replies that you are poor. And if he replies that I have 5,000 pounds, he is still poor. Because 5,000 is less than even half of what he requires. If he said, I have 7,000 pounds, then we say to him that you are a miskin and not a fuck. And if he said, I possess 12,000 pounds, says that you are wealthy. So if the person possesses the amount which suffices him on an annual basis, then he is, we consider him to be rich and wealthy. And if he has less than half of what he requires to suffice him, then he's considered to be faqir. And he, if he has more than a half, however, beneath, or less than that which he requires to live and suffices him to live, then we consider him to be miskeen. And Allah subhanahu wa said that verily the sadaqat, i.e. the zakah, it is lil fuqara wal masakin. It is for, meaning it is to be given to the poor and the masakin so they can possess it. Meaning Sheikh Ibrahim, he gives to the poor person his zakah and he makes it his ownership and he possesses it for the whole year to feed him and his children. And then the second group of people who deserve our zakah are the l'amilin. So we said that this brother, he gave three million pounds of zakah. And he said to this person that you know the situation of the poor people in your locality. So you go take this zakah and go distribute it to them. So this person, he kept two million in his pocket and the remaining million from the three, he began to distribute to the pawn. When we asked him 
that why did you not give the full three million? Why did you give the two? Why did you give one million and save the two million in your pocket? He says that I am from those people who are tasked with distributing the zakat. Don't you recite the Quran? So the meaning of wala amidina alayha are those people who have been tasked and made responsible with the collection and the distribution of zakat are those people who have been appointed by the state, the Muslim state. Like the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he sent Mu'adh ibn Jabal radiallahu an, and he appointed him as the collector and the distributor of zakat. So those people are deserving of zakat as well. However, if a wealthy person he appoints a person personally to go distribute zakah, then he does not come under this category. Unless the wealthy person from his own money and not from his zakah, he gives him some wealth. And then the third category of people who are deserving of zakah are the new Muslims. And this is one of the biggest problems in Europe. Somebody who has been a Muslim for six years and he still considers himself to be a new Muslim. If you ask him to learn, he'll say new Muslim. Do this, I'm a new Muslim. But when it comes to marriage, now he's an old Muslim. So everything, and this person, he keeps making the excuse that I'm a revert Muslim or a new Muslim. Whereas Sa'ad radiallahu an, six years uh, of Islam, of him being a Muslim, and when death approached him, the throne shook. Until when is this excuse going to be used to justify a person's actions? Every time something is requested, like come study Tawheed, come seek knowledge, then the same excuse is mentioned that I'm a new Muslim or a revert to Muslim. So the point is that the one who is new to Islam, perhaps a week since he has accepted Islam or a short amount of time since he has accepted Islam, zakah can be given to that person to make his heart firm upon Islam. And then the next category of people who are deserving of zakah are, are those who we want to emancipate through the zakah. So we don't give the zakah to the slave because if it's given to the slave, perhaps the master will take it and keep it. Rather, we ask the master that how much would it cost for the emancipation of this slave and then zakah is given in order to emancipate and free the slave. And then the next category of people are the gharim. What is the intended meaning of al gharimin? I.e. a person who has a debt upon him. So the meaning of al gharimin, i.e. those who have a debt upon them. And this does not mean that somebody like Sheikh Ibrahim, he buys a Mercedes and he buys it on installments and then he thinks, okay, now zakah can be given from the Muslims. And therefore give me your zakah so I can pay off the installments of my Mercedes. So this is not the intended meaning of a person who has a debt upon them. Rather, like a poor person, for example, and he needs to buy food, or perhaps he has to buy a room, and he has debts upon him, zakah can be given to help that person. As for a rich person who wants to buy, a, who has bought a Mercedes or a villa on now. installments, and then wants the zakah of the Muslims, no zakah is due for him. So we have to look at what caused the debt. And then the zakah is not given to the person who is in debt. Naam. Rather, zakah is given to the one to whom the debt is owed. Meaning, we go to the person to whom the debt is owed and we ask him how much is the debt and he mentions the amount. And then we give the wealth to him to fulfill his debt. If we give it to the person who owes the debt, Maybe he will buy more with it and he, will not, I mean, and he will not fulfill his debt. And then the next group of people to whom zakah is given is the saying of Allah, وَفِي سَبِيلِ In the path of Allah. And what is the intended meaning of fi سَبِيلِ So every avenue of goodness, is that correct that zakah, is it correct that zakah can be given in every and any avenue of goodness? It's not correct. So the intended meaning of fi سَبِيلِ is not every avenue of goodness or every project of goodness. Because if this was the intended meaning, then the ayah would have been sufficient for it to say that sadaqah has to be given fi sabidillah. Because fi sabidillah would then include within it the poor and the masakin and all the other types. So when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala specified eight groups of people, then the intended meaning of fi sabidillah is ayy jihad fi sabidillah. However, 
the fi sabilillah towards which zakah can be given is that which is conducted under the Muslim ruler and where everything is clear. It's not for any and every person who begins to attack a country and then wants zakah of the people. And then the next person who is deserving of zakah is Ibn Sabil. And the literal meaning of Ibn Sabil is the child of the road. You would say that it is the son of so and so. But when Ibn Sabil is used, meaning somebody who has traveled and left his family, and then during his journey, he has been cut off from his provisions. Like, for example, a person who travels from Britain and travels to Medina and he's in, intending to do Hajj or Umrah, and whilst he's on his journey, he's completely cut off from his provisions. So nowadays, the majority of people, they cash, it is accessed digitally, whether it's through their phones or through their uh, cards. So if you have a person who was on a journey, and he lost his phone and he lost his card, and so you say to him, look, take money from the bank, and he says, look, my bank is in Britain, and I have no phone calls, no access to my bank. This is Ibn Sabil. Uh, Sheikh Ibrahim, he says that I have a question. He says that, can I give zakah li ihda zawjata? Now, can I give zakah to one of my wives? She requires money. Or can I give it to one of my children or some of my children? Or can I give it to my mother? So this person, for example, who possesses 200 billion pounds of wealth and he says that can I give zakah to my wife or my children or my parents and we say to him no because zakah it is given to purify the wealth and therefore why are you given that which is required to purify your wealth and this is how the state of some of the wealthy people that they don't want the poor people to receive to receive their zakah they want to keep the zakah within their own family and so they begin to give to their wives or children or parents. So, no. so, so we say to him that give your family members from your own wealth as for your zakah, it is the right of the poor. So you are not allowed to give zakah to those people upon whom it is an obligation for you to spend from your own wealth. And neither is zakah given to another rich person. And neither is zakah given to a strong, independent person who knows how to work and goes out and work. And neither is zakah given to the household of the Prophet ﷺ. And then the second type of zakah is the charity which is nafal. Naam. Wallahu a'lam. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Jazakum Allahu khairan.